This is Neil Patwari. I'm going to talk about joint entropy and entropy rate. So the definition of joint entropy is as follows. Let x1 through xn be random variables with range sx. The joint entropy of two of the random variables is h of x1, x2 that is negative of the sum of the joint probabilities multiplied by the log of those probabilities. The joint entropy of n random variables together is h of those n random variables. It's negative of the sum of the joint probabilities multiplied by the log base 2 of those probabilities. These probabilities, of course, add up to 1 if I sum over both x1 and x2 because they're probability mass functions. So these are probabilities just like the probabilities for a single random variable, except we're considering the value of two random variables at the same time. Here, note that I'm using random variable. We're also talking about samples because we're talking about a source that we're trying to encode. And one of the questions we ask is, what is the entropy of n IID random variables? Okay, IID stands for independent and identically distributed. Okay, so that means that the PMF of these n random variables is the same. So if I have uh, PX1, it's the same as the probability of X2 being the same value. And um, so we're just going to call this um, P of X and little x. The probability mass function for an I independent random variables is going to be as follows that the probability joint probability of x1 through xn is the product of the individual PMFs that same function multiplied by itself n times each with a different dummy variable Okay, you can show that in this case, the entropy of all of the random variables together, x1 through xn, is just n times the entropy of the individual random variables, x1, for example. So this makes sense because we're talking about information. If we have independent samples or independent experiments, we would expect to get the same information from the n measurements as we would from n times one of the measurement. This gets us closer to answering the question, what is the average entropy? Okay, and by that I mean what is 1 over n times the entropy of our random variables. In the case of the IID random variables, this would just be the entropy of one of the random variables. So if I have samples that are completely independent from each other, then the average entropy is just going to be the entropy of the particular random variable or sample that we take, just one at a time. Now, in many sources, that's not the case. We don't have independent samples. So for example, in English text, we have characters, and one character is highly correlated with the next character. There are certain character combinations that we know happen more often. So in general, we don't have independent random variables, and we want to know what is the average entropy I'm going to need for my source. And this gets to the theoretical value that we use called the entropy rate. The entropy rate is that limit as n goes to infinity of the average error. In other words, h, which we're going to call the entropy rate, is the limit as n goes to infinity of this 1 over n h x1 to xn. We can calculate this for certain sources. I'm going to do an example here. And I'm going to use English text. It's a very relevant example because we often send text 
and we encode text to um, try to reduce the amount of data that we're sending on our communication system when we're sending text. But English text is highly correlated. We want to know what is the entropy rate of English text. First of all, what is the entropy of a character in the English language? Well, that would be finding the probabilities each character. You could do this by looking at a sample of English text. You could look at books or newspapers. It might be application dependent. If I was sending text messages, they might not be the same use of English as a book, for example. Um, but um, for this example, I didn't, uh, I didn't have access to a large database of uh, texts. So instead, I picked a source. I picked uh, Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Um, it's a book that I can find the text for online very easily. And I wrote uh, a program to read through that play and find the probability of each letter. And so of all my characters here, I chose to limit myself. I didn't want to have to get into the details of what punctuation is used and what uh, whether letters are sent with a capital letter or a lowercase letter. So my set here is the space character and also a lowercase a through um, lowercase z. So this space I should um, point out that I'm including and then all of the lowercase letters. This is my SX. Um, it has 27 possible values. My random variable is X. Okay, so I want to know what is the probability mass function of X. So when I do this, I have the probability of each of these characters and my range. I have the space is the most common in this text. I have E. So F is right here. E is just before it. Um, it is the next most common uh, value out of my SX. And then I've got A, um, O, um, T. These are the most common letters in Romeo and Juliet. I can come up with the entropy of X. Remember, it doesn't matter what the, the characters are to the entropy, it just cares what the probabilities are. And here, when I do this, I get a value of 4.12 okay, bits. Units out of the entropy is always going to be bits. Okay, the next part of this example is to look at the joint probability of two character sequences. Okay, so I would have, for example, if I read the word the, um, and then a space, the character sequences would be th, then he, then e space, and then so on. So my sx is this same set but squared. We've got all two character combinations from that original set. And I find my probabilities as follows. I scan the text for every pair of two characters, and I accumulate them in a PMF. And when I'm done, I compute the, the entropy of x1 comma x2, and I find for Romeo and Juliet that I get uh, 7.46, which is 2 times 3.73. So this is now our average entropy for these two characters. You can see the probability mass function here. I had to uh, make a matrix of these joint probabilities and then plot that in a image SC command in MATLAB. It gives me a color for each pixel or each uh, point in this matrix. Um, and you can see the first character on the y-axis, the second character on the x-axis. 
So you'll see certain character combinations have a higher probability. For example, the first character being just before you, this is T. The second character being H, so TH is a common character sequence in English language because of the and this and that and so on. You can see that it make, makes sense that we get these probabilities. It's very sparse, right? Very, there are lots and lots of character combinations that are very unlikely and a few that are very likely. So the entropy is not the same as twice the entropy of each letter. It's not 8.24 bits. It is 7.46 bits. So I can encode English with uh, fewer bits if I consider two character combinations. I wrote the same MATLAB code to compute the entropy of three character combinations. Again, the same source. And I found that the um, three bit combinations have 10.04 bits, um, which is three times 3.35 bits. And for four letter combinations, we have four times 2.99 bits. So the per letter entropy is going down from 4.12 bits to 3.73 bits to 3.35 bits to 2.99 bits. It keeps going down as I include more and more letters. This also holds for words. If we consider the entropy in one word or two words or three words and four words, the entropy goes down as I include more and more words. And this is why your auto-suggest feature on your phone um, is usually pretty successful. Once it considers two or three or four words together, there's very little uh, additional information that's contained in the next word. In other words, there are very few words that have high probability to be the subsequent word, and it can then show you a list of a few words and it's likely that one of the ones that you want to use is actually contained within that list. Okay, so that's the point of this example that additional letters uh, can allow us to um, find the average entropy and if we were to keep going and include more and more letters we'd see this graph fall even further. We'd have it asymptotically approach a certain number. This is our, our entropy rate. So the Proakis and Salehi Communication Systems Engineering book says in section 6.2 that when it used an N of 10 that it found 1.3 bits per letter. Using the same procedure the entropy rate is getting down to about one bit per letter, and that's why we can be so efficient at compressing English text.